is our third in the series of Conversation with Candidates. Thank you for watching. Today, uh, we've invited all candidates, but today we have Carlo Bacci here. He's running for a seat on the select board. And so I will let Carlo introduce himself to his friends and neighbors. Thanks for coming, Carlo. Thanks, nice Linda. To see you. Glad you could make it. Thanks for having me. And um, I don't want to make this a tradition. This is my second year <laughs> uh, running, um, but I also want to uh, thank all the candidates for running and stepping up, uh, volunteering their time. And uh, I have much greater respect for anyone running for office and anyone who volunteers uh, currently and who's looking to volunteer. Um, I'm enjoying the experience. I enjoyed it last year. And um, I'm here again to you know, try to get elected this get year. Get over the top. Yes, <laughs> yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your beautiful family that we see pictures of on Facebook so often? Sure, sure. So um, bragging rights. Yeah, yeah. I'm originally from Medford. Um, we've been in, living in Reading for about 11 years. Uh, we're former business owners. We own the Chocolate Truffle. We moved, they moved that from Woburn to Reading in 2006, uh, right on Main Street, the corner of Main Street and Green Street. So that was our first um, interactions with the town as a business. Uh, and then we became residents several years later. So the Chocolate Truffle is still there at 494 Main Street. We actually live above it. Um, we're at ground zero for all the construction in downtown. Oh, yeah. Uh, which can be um, lovely at times. But I have three daughters. I have a sophomore in college, Abigail, graduate of RMHS. I have a sophomore at Essex Tech up in Danvers. And I have a seventh grader at Parker. Parker, sorry. We're a Killen family. Um, and also should be going through the high school with my um, youngest, Sophia. And Erin is originally from Reading, and so she has a history in town of living here um, and also owning a business here together. Uh, gives us a little bit different perspective on how the town operates. We've had different interactions with the town on that level. Uh, we survived the downtown construction, uh, which took a while, but it came out very nice. And we decided to sell the business, the retail portion of our business, five years ago. Uh, we're still a chocolate, ma chocolate manufacturing business in Swampscott, Mass. Um, and you never eat chocolate, right? I eat chocolate every day. <laughs> it's part of my diet. Totally it's part of my diet. diet. If I had to change the food pyramid, chocolate would be on the top. Um, but yeah, so we're still doing that in Swampscott. That's where I go every day for work. Uh, that's going on 14 years of chocolate manufacturing. We make our famous peanut butter cup that oh, we sell. Oh, fabulous. Thank yeah. you. We sell yeah. all over the country, but primarily we're local. We sell them to the paper store. Uh, and here in Reading, we sell them to Pamplemousse. Uh, we're in local gift stores, uh, local independent shops. We're in Wakefield, we're in Melrose, we're I in the in Cape. I was in Wilmington, there was a shop there. Yeah, in Cardsmart, we're in Cardsmart, Wilmington. So we're, we have a good presence. We're up in North Country, we're up at Zeb's, and we're down the Cape. and So we get around, we get around with that. So I've been a business owner for 30 years. Graduated Northeastern in 1989 and um, have had a career of starting businesses, buying businesses, opening businesses. Uh, unfortunately closing a few stores and many years ago I obtained my real estate license I'm also a licensed real estate broker in the state and I function as a part-time business broker uh, on the side when I can I enjoy that thoroughly so basically I'm a mediator between a buyer and a seller and it's a it's a much different transaction than selling a house because you're dealing with landlords you're dealing with employees you're dealing with commercial leases uh, you're dealing with profit and loss statements uh, you're dealing with a lot and um, even though I'm just a messenger, uh, I have to know all that information up front to help sell a business and, uh, and help a buyer uh, buy the business and make them feel comfortable. So now you're running for select board. Again. Again. Yes. And the issues haven't changed much, have they, in the last year? Not much, a little bit. We've, a lot of the projects um, have come out of the ground. Uh, some are. Uh, built and being lived in. Uh, the one across from the depot um, already has tenants. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure a year ago uh, the post office building wasn't up That's like it right. is now. Yeah. Uh, the building across from me, um, they're going pretty quick on that one on Main Street. Uh, the Gould Street, the former EMARC building, they are doing seem to be doing site work there now. Um, same, same thing with Lakeview and Eaton, uh, they seem to be doing site work, nothing above ground yet. So everything we were discussing last year is still ongoing. Um, and we're adding a lot of residents to downtown, which uh, some people might object to. Um, I've been walking all the precincts for the past three weeks, 
and knocking on doors and talking to people and, and some people are dragging me into their house because they remember me from last year and asking me questions about certain things but the two things that have been resonating a little bit are all this construction that's going on how our, how our town is changing uh, is, it a, is it not becoming a city and some people are okay with it a lot of people don't understand why we're going in that direction and a lot of issues on parking um, some people have discussed uh, maybe a potential override in the near future, but I, I'm hoping that will not come up too much. Um, this first one, the one we passed a few years ago, was supposed to last approximately three to five years, and I'm, I'm hoping it's on track to last longer. Mm -hmm. I know the school committee will have to work hard at that, and the select board hopefully can do a good job on the town side mm -hmm. um, to avoid that and some control some costs and put things in place. but. Uh, an override is a un unnecessary evil, unfortunately, uh, to sustain the town. Um, we're going to be dealing with Killam in the near future mm -hmm. um, as a big debt exclusion, which is essentially yeah, we, a loan. We just talked about that in yeah, another show. Which is essentially a loan like the high school and the library, so that will be money approved by town meeting, and then we will do the project, and that money will be paid off. Um, override is permanent, and that will be on our taxes Forever. 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 So um, the construction, I've been to a lot of meetings uh, the past three weeks trying to get caught up to speed. Can I just ask you? Sure. Um, because we're on Facebook, we see a lot of the complaints and the hot issues that are going on. Um, a lot of people don't seem to understand. They think the select board is approving all of this housing, and I, I have to interject every now and then and say, no, they can go to the state and they can do their own thing and promise low-income housing, and we're stuck. Right. The, the, the select board does we, we, the smart growth district that was created in, in downtown Haven Street, Main Street, that triangle from the depot up to Main Street and over. Uh, was approved many years ago and probably took many years of planning. And if I was on that board, I probably would have approved it and uh, been okay with it because what I've learned more recently is that to have a successful downtown, you have to have people living in downtown. And uh, I agree with that statement. And we, we all want a thriving downtown. We want different options, different restaurants. We want family-friendly places to go to. I mean, I was at White Lone Books today picking up recycling uh, that Liz saves for us to use in our business. We also do that with the Natural Food Exchange. Um, on top of shopping there, we've partnered with those two businesses in town that they save their recycling and their peanuts and their packing materials and don't throw them in the trash. And then we reuse them mm -hmm. and use them for our packing, shipping. for oh, shipping uh, yeah, outbound. That's a good idea. And yeah. we also do that with some Whole Foods as well. We collect their ice packs, we collect their peanuts. There's only one zero waste Whole Foods, at least in New England. And that's because of a good friend of ours, and that's the one in Bedford. And you always think of Whole Foods being ahead of everyone else. Yeah, right. Even they struggle. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're trying to accomplish that at all the stores, and our friend is going store to store to train them right. on how to become zero waste, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and we've always tried to recycle, reuse. Uh, but getting back to your question about the select board and... Um, all these projects. All these projects. Up. I mean, the 40 Bs that we're uh, hopefully on pause with right now are. are 40 Bs are 40 a certain B's, percentage uh, of. A housing, right. The 40 B housing, which is strictly residential. Yep. And 10% uh, is uh, quote unquote affordable housing. And uh, we have a few of those projects in town right now. Uh, the Met was one of them. Um, that came with some controversy um, over the developer and how he uh, did things he shouldn't have. And then. Um, you know, and the neighbors couldn't do anything about it, and the town couldn't do anything about it. And that was very frustrating for those neighbors. Uh, Lakeview Eaton seemed to go a little bit better. Uh, that neighborhood organized. That developer was willing to work with them and reduce the number of units and, and, and made the project more viable. They could have just steamrolled them and did whatever they want. But that developer. They, they actually go to the state and they file their permits, and then when they come to Reading, they only have to follow our local zoning things and um, CPDC and all you know the tolerance from the street, the this, the that. Yeah, all their that hands stuff. are tied, right? Their hands are yeah. tied, unfortunately. So we just we don't we we don't have a lot of power to control. Correct, our own and, destiny. and and a lot of towns are dealing with that, not just us. Um, we have that big project on Tarrant Lane, uh, behind Fusilis in Wakefield. 
that's a 40B complex that will impact our town roads. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to be neighborly. The town managers talking to each other. But uh, Wakefield is trying to make it less units uh, because this 40B housing is kind of can uh, mm -hmm. do it. Oh, it's almost the wild, wild west yeah. in a way. Yeah. And so the 40 R projects that we have, which are the mixed use buildings, I don't know that much.